I think what is important for today is the moment now. The major problem is the workings of our minds, which is in general, by and large, a mechanical process. It is a thing that most monkeys can do. I watched uh, something uh, a few days ago on tool using animals and I watched a pigeon figure out a mechanical process figure it out figure out that it was doing something wrong because it had to turn a knob a certain way when a particular color of light flashed it was not in a laboratory but on a roof and then he had to turn a knob to get the corn, but he turned the knob in the wrong sequence and the other pigeons got the corn. Corn. And he figured out, oh, there's got to be another way, and he figured it out, so if he turned it in the right sequence, he would get the corn. So it is obviously creative and problem-solving, and that is a little different from the tool you call mind which operates off of past. It is like a computer. You punch the button and it spits out what you have fed into it. In this sense, mind then is the problem. It feeds back all of your expectations, everything that you have, all the negatives that you have, fed into it. The automatics. How do we change this whole thing? It is simple. Be here now. Be right here, right now. How do we do that? Easy. Listen, look, smell, feel, taste. When you are doing these things, you cannot be in the automatic process. You can only be filled with this moment, this time, where all of your power rests and the eternal now. It is always now. It is always now. It is always now. When I'm in my senses, I cannot be in the future or in the past. When I am in my senses, I'm here now creating the future and the past creating the future of being here now, creating the future of success, knowledge. When I'm here, totally and absolutely now. That stops the mind process. That stops us from if I only had blah, 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 it puts us in touch with now where we can achieve blah, 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 blah. The only point that you can project yourself into the future, whatever future that may be, whatever, however successful or non-successful that may be, you have only now this moment, not to fantasize, 
but to become absolutely and totally involved in the creation. Not fantasy, but creation of reality. I watched something last night that was amazing to me. Things are quite amazing. I drove around a hotel for two and a half hours last night. Couldn't get off the expressway <laughs> to get to the hotel. I could see it. <laughs> Every time we take an exit, it take us someplace else. <laughs> two and a half hours. Round and round the hotel. <laughs> I watched people get frustrated, <laughs> angry, upset, and all it was was a simple thing. There was a little road that had no marking. If you, had, you just take that and you're right in front of it. But I watched all the figuring out and all the wheels turning and Asking me, like, how the hell should I know? I've never been here before. <laughs> I don't live in New Jersey. You know what I know. <laughs> but around and around on the turnpike. You said, there it is over there. Okay, then we'll take this exit. Take this exit, and all of a sudden it's over there. How the hell did that happen? So, oh, I know. We'll go around over here. And you go around over here, and it's over there. You say, Jesus. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> well, missing the obvious. There must be a little road here someplace. <laughs> Once we got the little road, it was all right, but we had to stop. We'd ask, stop and ask people before. We'd ask the fire department because obviously the fire department knows where everything is. They may have known, but they couldn't tell you. Well, finally we asked someone at another hotel over there that we stopped, that was right across from it over there. We asked someone who knew, and they told us, made it simple. You understand my point? You understand the story? We must keep it simple. All the other directions were so complicated because we were asking someone who was at a point that was too far away. One of my suggestions is let's ask it simply. Let's take one direction and get close enough and close enough to somebody will know. <laughs> somebody who's close enough knows how. That's the point. Take the directions. Take it simply and easily. Be all right. You'll get there. The ramp will put you right in front of the door. It's also interesting how, after having found it, being hungry, we went to the restaurant that had one waitress <laughs> who was also the barmaid across the hall. <laughs> Two hours later, I ordered uh, tuna fish told him, you know, to watch it because I didn't want it burned. <laughs> Don't burn my tuna. <laughs> it's taken an awful long time to scoop up a couple of scoops of tuna fish. But in waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, patiently, there were a group of people who were there before us. Their bill came to about $200. They had steaks and chickens and stuff, and by the time it got there, they didn't want it. So management said, it's free. They said, well, we don't want it. They said, we'll give it to those people over there. 
So the people were, who were with me had steak and chicken breast and for free. You see, if you wait patiently, <laughs> just be patient. They had ordered, I believe it was, uh, potato peelings, you know, potato skins, yeah. Same thing. <laughs> and instead they wound up eating New York steak and uh, lemon chicken breast and for free. We wait. Be patient. Be here. The question is answered. The reward is there. Only when we get in a hurry and begin to press do we miss the signs that it's there? Or do we miss it coming together? After all, reality is your creation. It needs to come together. It's not going to just go poof and be there, layer upon layer of build-up. And you will notice slowly but surely the signs begin to change. Slowly, slowly, slowly. It will change. And there it is. In order to make this happen, you must be here now. Focused here now. Doing what it takes here now to make that which you desire a reality when here now for it comes again. Don't rush. But yet don't run from what needs to be done. If you know what needs to be done, if you are afraid and you know you must confront your fear now, then do so. You have nothing to lose except your fear. If you know you must confront your insecurity now, you have nothing to lose except your insecurity. <laughs> so, do it now. Without the expectation. As the expectation changes, or as you let go of it, things happen. The expectation makes you impatient. It makes you rush. The expectation. As they said to me last night, well, aren't you impatient to get to bed? No, because I can close my eyes and go to sleep right here in the car, which is what I'm about to do in a few minutes after riding for two and a half hours. The deed is done. <laughs> the deed is done. Now is your moment of power. What is it you want to achieve? You must get a feel for now. How do you do that? Listen to what's going on. Hear the sounds. Smell the smells. Taste your taste. Feel. Lose your head and come to your senses. Senses. Sense. To sense. To experience. Now. An experience changes you. A head trip does not change you, for it's only a head trip. You ever notice how you can intellectually realize something? <laughs> and tomorrow it doesn't matter because you're right back doing what you did the day before. 
That's because you try and figure it out. You cannot figure it out. Can't be done. That's an intellectual pursuit. Intellectuals are very stupid people. They know too much. They know way more than they could possibly know. <laughs> that is why they can't change. They already know. Experience changes us. That is why we must do now. That's what makes the difference. Knowledge changes us. Figuring it out does not. To be here now. There's no need to say, well now let me see. To be here now I must know. You simply be here by getting involved in what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, what you feel without the judgment because the judgment would be the mind coming in play again or I'd, without identifying what it is you smell, what it is you taste, what it is you feel because now you are intellectualizing again. You know red when you see it. You don't have to say in your mind red. What are you? <laughs> no, 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 no. You know what you see, what is to say, experience. That is what we must do. Experience changes us. Real knowledge to know that changes us. We don't get knowledge from a book. We get knowledge from experience. If it were true that you could gain knowledge from a book, you could come right out of college and get top level job <laughs> no they don't you can't come out of college and become president of the company you can get in lower management where they give you the opportunity to learn what all that you learned in college really means to gain the experience because otherwise it is just an intellectual pursuit although they act like they know it all they don't. They need the experience. You know, you walk out and say, I got my bachelor's degree, and they say, go get a master's. Say, now you, you know enough to come in to begin to learn, but you're not going to be vice president. You're not going to be president. You're certainly not going to be chairman of the board. Because it takes time to experience. That's what really counts. That's what really counts. That's what changes you. Using your senses changes you. Because it takes you out of your mind and puts you into yourself. Puts you here now. Takes you out of the wish mode. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. My grandmother used to say, son, wish in one hand, crap in the other. See which one gets full quicker. <laughs> the one you crap in. <laughs> it is not about wishing, it is about creation. A wish is begging one who is in control of oneself does not beg of life but commands life not demands commands there is a difference we most often I suppose don't know the difference <laughs> You can stand there all day and demand that something happen. You can demand all day that you get a Mercedes. You will not get one. 
You can command, and it will happen. In time, it will happen. The signs will appear, and there it will be. It is a command. A command is a sureness. A command is without doubt. A command is totally in the present. This is a command. It is simply so. That is all there is to it. And it is so. For this, you must lose your mind. Let it come apart by focusing on that which is real. The mind is a tool that is used, that should be used to report. Not to condemn, not to judge, not to be moralistic, not to be any of that, but simply to report what it sees. What is it I see? I see Kathy's body. Her hair is light brown. I think her eyes are blue or gray. Mine are bad. <laughs> she is fair skinned. She is wearing a white t shirt with. Calypso, the Crusoe Society, in green with a naked person. I assume to be a woman because they have breasts and a dolphin. Blue jeans, faded blue jeans, salmon or pink socks. The mind has reported. Good Kathy, bad Kathy. Pretty Kathy, ugly Kathy, I don't know. Those are judgments. And that is not the realm of the mind. It does not know any of those. Is Kathy pretty? I don't know. I'm not Kathy. That is her opinion. She may be to me. But then, that is my opinion, and is only opinion, and has nothing to do with Kathy. It is not the realm of the mind to know that which cannot be known, although it tries like hell to know. Its job is only to report. train coming get off the track <laughs> well is it a good train or a bad train <laughs> it's just a train but you will be a dead person if you don't get off the track if you don't heed the report that is what this is for what you are your consciousness can see and solve problems it can see if it is here now it can see what the parts are and understands that there are no questions questions are of the mind there are only answers <laughs> and it looks at the parts the parts come together and makes the answer no question, only answers. This is how you know what there is to know. You look at it and it tells you exactly what it is. If something breaks, if you look at it, you see how it goes back together. You got the parts. <laughs> you don't have to ask the question. You don't. You just look at it. It tells you. The answer is there. There's no need for the question. What need of you of a question when you have the answer? It's all right there before you. It is all there. Well, how do you know you know? How do you know that you are? 
because you are. That's how you know. <laughs> how do you know you know? Because you know. That's how you know. It is that simple. But you see, the deep philosophical questions are normally from a fool. How do I know that I exist? What a dumb question. What a stupid question. How do you know when you have a headache? How do you know when you have a headache? How do you know when you are hungry? How do you know when you are horny? Because you are. That's how you know. If you don't know whether you are or not, obviously you aren't. <laughs> you wouldn't come to me and say, am I hungry? How the hell should I know? I don't know about you, but I am. Oh. How do you know? See, the deep philosophical thinker is only the court fool in disguise. The answer is there. <laughs> the answer is there. We need but look. We need but be here. The answer is simple. How do I find peace with myself? It's easy. Stop creating disturbance. <laughs> You'll be at peace. <laughs> Stop disliking parts of yourself. <laughs> Everything's okay. There's no problem. To become a holy, just another word for whole. And what does whole mean? Containing all. Why spend time wishing you were some other way? Why not be what you are? And what you are not will fall away. When you don't have a headache, where is the headache? When you're not acting stupid, where is stupidity? <laughs> I don't know, but it ain't here. <laughs> it's like when there's a bear chasing you. You don't run when the bear isn't there. Doesn't make any sense. Where is the bear? I don't know, but he ain't here. <laughs> That's all I need to know. He ain't here. He is no problem. Be whole, be total, be complete, be self. Use your senses. Use your senses and be here and that division will not exist. The division within you only exists when you call it. When you divide yourself into good person, bad person. Smart person, dumb person. Worthy person, unworthy person. Powerful person, weak person. Just be person. Just be you. Just be conscious. Be there. We only make assholes of ourselves when we are confused and try to be smart. When we are being stupid and try to be smart, only then. Then and only then. Do we make jerks of ourselves? If we're just being a person, not trying to be smarter, not trying to be in control of, not trying to manipulate, we're just a person. And that's all you can ever be. <laughs> that is all we can ever be. But isn't that enough? Isn't that enough? 
what would you be if not a person? What would you be if not human? You would be gods with an inflated idea of what a god is. With an inflated idea with what a god is. You are an expression of God. Then all need be is you be you. You don't have to inflate it. <laughs> now you're being, you're not being God. You'll be trying to be something that you aren't. <laughs> it does not make sense. It can only bring you heartache. It can only bring you pain. It can only allow other people to look at you and say, what a jerk. And then you got pain again because instead of them perceiving you as the God you would have them, they perceive you as the jerk that you are behaving like. <laughs> so instead of just being ourselves, lighten up. Just lighten up. Just lighten up. It's not that serious. We are so serious we cannot act. What we need to do is stop talking. <laughs> Be with your senses. The problem is you. there is no storm and you keep saying, it's storming, it's storming, it's storming. The wind is blowing, it's so cloudy. The sun is shining, the wind is peaceful. It's a soft, wonderful day. But all we can see is what we're saying. If we but be silent, we can see the day for what it is. We can experience the day for what it is. If we would be silent, we talk too much. We're always chattering. There's always static. You can't see as you're listening to the chatter, the incessant chatter. That is the only problem. And it's not a real one, it's an illusion. You're telling yourself it's storming and believing what you're saying instead of what you see. <laughs> instead of what you see, touch, feel, taste, smell. You understand? You understand what I'm saying to you? It's all okay. It's all fine. Trying to convince yourself that it is not. You did this as children. This is what children do. It's time to grow up. The child, you know, remember back. Just remember back. You knew more than your parents. You didn't believe it, ask you. <laughs> of course you did. But you hadn't been on this earth but six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve years. But Ma, it's a new time now. Yeah, right. It's new to you because you just got here. <laughs> it's old to me because I went through that <laughs> when I was your age. What do you mean? It's a new time. No, it's not. Well, you don't understand the modern generation, no. I understand the new generation. The new generation does not be understand the old generation. The old generation has been where the new generation is, but the new generation has not been the old generation. Not in this time. 
So one of us has a narrow experience and one of us has a broad experience. But the prevailing attitude among the youth, and as you know, you made certain decisions. And you talk to yourself incessantly inside. Things you wouldn't say to your parents or things you wouldn't say to other people. You chatter, 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 uh -huh, and I'm not, and blah, blah, and when I get, and blah, blah. You're still doing it. You're still doing it. That's the problem. <laughs> you forgot to stop. <laughs> you simply forgot to stop. Stop. Nobody can make you do anything now. You're big now. Stop. You're as big as they are. <laughs> You're old now. Why? What need of all this chatter? What need of all these opinions? The opinions mislead us and make us think we know more than we know. They mislead us and keep us ignorant. They keep us not knowing because we know. No, we don't. We told ourselves the lie that we know. Out of all the people in this room, everybody can perform the same act and be doing a different thing. But yet, someone outside of ourselves will look at us and say, Oh, I know what you're doing. I know what that means. Blah, blah. Well, you know too much. That is knowing too much. You don't know. Hell, you don't even know what you're doing when you're doing it. you got to stop and find out what you're doing. You don't know the reality of another. You sit and counsel a patient. You let the patient find out what they're doing. They perfect the cure, effect the cure. Not the doctor, the patient. You just, most of the time, say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Listen to what you're saying. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. What else can you do? You don't know what's going on <laughs> inside of that person. Their process, what it means. It's important that they know. That's the deal. It's not important that you know. It is their life. It is their, their being. You cannot know anyway. You can hear some words and think you know. Approx you can approximate, but yet you do not know. An approximation is not a knowing. You know, I can be approximately in this chair and my butt will be on the floor, approximately, <laughs> in the vicinity of, you understand? So it is the mind that creates all these problems for us. It knows too much. It's always in the future. If it's in the future, it's in the past of what someone did to us and how we were treated and what about now? <sighs> How many times have you been driving down the street? A person standing at the curb. Looking very carefully. And step right off the curb <laughs> in front of your car. But they didn't do that too. <laughs> We're too busy looking in one direction. <laughs> Cars are coming from both directions. We have to change our view. You cannot view the world in terms of your mind. 
I was taught this worth ethic. ethic. So, what does that mean? It means something to you. <laughs> I have another one. She has another one. <laughs> he has another one. What? Uh, is, are we going to make that an issue in our life? That's foolishness. There's something much more important caring about each other. And caring about each other means having the good common sense to know that something that is learned here is simply something that is learned here and one behavior is no better or worse than another in terms of that because it is simply something learned and is therefore quite shallow. That's why it becomes a problem because it is more important than it really is. Why we cannot get along together because we keep focusing on that shallow nonsense instead of what's real. Then we don't deserve peace. We are warmongers. You get what you ask for. If you're constantly creating war in your own head, what do you expect? <laughs> What do you expect? Hatred of war does not bring peace. Only love of peace brings peace. You cannot mate an elephant with a duck. <laughs> you cannot do it. Like unto like. That is the issue. If you mate with chaos, you will get chaos. If you mate with peace, there will be peace. Mm -hmm.